In spring of 2010, I just got this bug. I was like, I, I almost had completely forgotten about Shy of Normal. And I thought, you know what? Um, I've got the bug again. I wanna, I should finish this up. It's sitting on a shelf. I've already spent money on it. So that's what I did. Nice place. Um, I was Would wondering... you like anything to drink? Um, sure. Uh, can you tell me? We have Coke, Kool-Aid, milk. Beer? Uh, Kool-Aid will be fine. Oh, okay, milk. I altered the story of um, what's included with the college girls, and instead of having them be actual college girls, I thought, wouldn't it be funny if these girls were actually um, not age appropriate, if they were in their late 30s or into their mid to late 40s, but they think that they're still in college. So I hired the three girls. Um, we shot that segment in a day. A very long day but we got it all done in one day and um i had also then gone back and written a wraparound story to tie these three plays together and that stars brink stevens and felissa rose and um essentially it's about this author who has lost her mojo she um nothing inspires her anymore her life is very dull very normal so her friend jamie who's played by felissa rose um says, well, why don't you just take a notebook and go out into society and observe people? Um, just people are all kind of crazy. They're all just a little shy of normal. So why don't you make up stories about these people that you see in public? So keeping that in mind, when you watch these three stories, these are all just taken from little bits of what the, the author character is seeing. Um, delivery wound up being um, about 20 minutes too long. We also discovered that there was an entire um, tape of footage missing. To this day, we have no idea where it went. Um, it contained many important scenes. We ultimately decided that maybe it was best to really kind of start trimming the fat because key things that needed to be in weren't in that led to other things later in the movie. And then there was just a lot of talk. And because that particular segment was so stagey um, and the camera really wasn't moving around that much, it kind of bored me a little bit. And so I thought, um, along with, with Derek, to, inter to interject some life into it, that we needed to trim it drastically. So we cut all the fat and it made it move so much quicker. And it really ultimately didn't lose anything. There were a couple of jokes that were lost here and there. There was a bit where the doctor comes in and says, you know, that they're gonna have to, um, you know, give the girls shots to kind of start getting ready for the deliveries themselves. And um, Jeannie throws herself in the bed. She's like, drugs? you know, fill me up. And so there were some cute moments that were lost ultimately. But as far as the meaning of the story goes, I think it's all still there. Oh, here. I don't know. Well, it don't make a damn to me if Ann will suffer because I have to be married to that. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> yeah. What? So what are y'all reading? Uh, it's a book on energy and chakras. Book of what? Oh, you know what? That's the stuff that Lily's into where she, uh, Praise the elephant statue? Yeah, sure. Oh, well, she's talking about meditating in front of the statue of Ganesha, the guardian and protector of the root chakra. Yeah, that's the one, that Ganesha one. It's amazing, really. We just started getting into it. You know, we've really found a way to look within ourselves. Yeah. And reflect. Gives us a much broader perspective on life. Really? So what do you do? You just sit and meditate? <laughs> well, it's a little bit more complicated than that. It actually might be kind of hard to explain to you. Um, see, you have seven chakras in your body, okay? And they each are part of a different organ that has a physical, emotional, and, and mental body. And by body, I don't mean head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I mean the embodiment of the different parts of us. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, the chakras serve many functions, they- Wait, now, it, it, hold on, is, is it kind of like, you know, how it takes 40 some odd muscles to frown? Mm -hmm. Like when Jeannie pisses me off, but it only takes four muscles for me to reach out and bitch slap her? Oh, <laughs> well, like this? My initial thought when I did this, when I 
when I bought the rights from the kids themselves was to do this annually, to go up to UWM every year for this senior project, see what the plays were, and option, the, option these plays from the kids, and again, take the casts and put them in front of a camera. What kind of a cool little um, thing this would be that I don't think anybody's ever done before. You know? And at this point, I think I, I think I would still maybe do a, a Shy of Normal 2 um, and base a series as an opportunity for new writers, but maybe turn it into an online creation, some type of entity where writers who don't have um, a lot of experience can submit short, short stories once a year and we choose the three best and um, we make those and then the, and then it becomes kind of a franchise in that. So it's always a new set of stories. I would probably use Brink as the um, connecting force in all of those that she would continue, her character of the author would be used to um, to carry this on. But I've now proven to myself that I can do something bro and broader. I can go into another genre and at least to some degree succeed at it. And, and, and that makes me happy. There's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of my soul. I feel